Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be checking out the preview release of the just released Dev Home by Microsoft. And what you see in front of you, this is considered like a new control center for developers on Windows. It gives you like kind of everything all in one place, and a lot of it is you're going to be looking at what the potential of this thing is going forward. Right now, it's kind of minimalistic. Well, you've got a dashboard for you can keep an eye on your uh, machine's current status, as well as, as you can see down here, we got a variety of different uh, GitHub plugins here. And then we've also got the ability here in the machine configuration to quickly install applications, clone repositories, and basically do it all at once. So if you've got a project with some, um, you know, development tools required, a code uh, to clone down and all that, you can do this in like one go and let it just take care of all that for you. And then ultimately there is another thing that I can't demonstrate for you, but I will talk about a little bit later on called DevDrive. And you're going to want to hear about that one because if you've ever been pissed off by a uh, Windows Defender making compiling code super slow, well, that one is coming to save the day. All right, so here we are back at the dashboard. Now, this is from the open source team behind some of the most popular Microsoft tools out there. Uh, the Power Toys, the uh, Windows Shell, the Linux subsystems for Windows, uh, and one other project that's not coming to me right now. They're the people that are making this. So this is a fully open source project. We'll see the repository and all that in just a minute. It's under the MIT license. Also, this thing for adding widgets is also uh, an open extension thing. So other people are going to be able to come in and create these new extensions here. So let's say if I wanted to track a project, Project, I put in the repository right here and then click and go and I've already done that for the Godot So here are the open issues on the Godot project. You got a little bit of customization available right here So then boom down there I can also get a quick look at all of the github extension all the um, you know issues assigned to me and so on So if you're using github, it could be like a quick launch look into your development world And I think the idea is over time other people start providing these extensions as well There's going to be a marketplace where you can download other extensions so you get this one shot view in into your world. Now, the other thing we can do is come on over here and I could do an end-to-end -end setup right here. And then I could come in here, add a repository. I don't know if I still have one highlighted. No, I don't. So what I've got here, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab one. So this is Raylib, say like I was working on a Raylib project. Come on in here, grab the, uh, the get URL for this guy. And then let's head on back over here. You basically just put the repository in right there. Another thing you can do obviously is hook into your own repositories. So I've got a variety of them right here. So these are things that I've cloned or forked or whatever. So let's say I was working on the um, shaving a haircut from Unreal Engine. Okay, so I could do it that way as well. And then there I am done that aspect is gonna go ahead and clone that into the directory that we specified. It's users source by default. Uh, and then what you can do now is I could go in here and say, okay, I need to add a number of different applications. So I say I need uh, Power Toys installed in here. I say, yep, add in Power Toys. So if you just did a fresh install, this could definitely be handy for you. I need Python here, the .NET SDK, uh, GitHub Desktop, and then I've already got these ones installed. Now, interestingly enough, I do have Node installed. So I got no idea why this ultimately worked. Uh, behind the scenes, this all uses Winget, which by the way is the other project that they work on that I couldn't remember. So uh, yeah, you can go in here, you pick all of the various different pieces that you want, you add it over to the list, and then once you've got it all, you click, you click this button over here, and then do setup, and it will clone your repositories, install all of the development software you need, and Bob's your uncle, you are done. Done. Now, again, the other thing that we've got going on, I'm just going to cancel out of here, is there is this dev drive right here. Now, in order to see that, we need to have an insider build of Windows 11, and I'm just not going down that road, but we'll cover exactly what uh, dev drive is, because I think it's going to be the thing that some of you are the most excited about. And honestly, DevDrive is a separate thing from DevHome, but DevHome is going to give you an interface for creating uh, dev drives if you're interested. So here it is. So again, the team behind Windows Terminal, Subsystem for Linux, Power Toys, and the Windows Package Manager Winget are now doing DevHome, an open source experience in Windows created just for developers, centralized location for setting up your machine, monitoring your system's information, and managing your projects. So at its core, is designed with customization and configurability in mind. It's built as an open source tool with an extension model to help you uh, to create your own customized dev home experience, striving to make it a great place for all developers and extensibility can make it tailored just for you. It's all around the extensions in the future. They are looking to create a marketplace so you can actually find the extensions. There is uh, documentation for if you want to create your own extensions here. It all I think it all hinges around this one. If there is a thriving market for these things and you can actually get 
Um, you know, you could have maybe a, a Discord extension in there for a specific thing that you're tracking for uh, information, uh, maybe a link into a specific mailbox or a calendar. So I could definitely see how extensions could uh, make this truly a development focused hub, but it'd be interesting to see how many people get into them. Right now, the key one we've got here are the um, the GitHub extensions. We saw a little bit of that in action right there. So you can see the issues that are assigned to you, the, the, um, the pull requests that you've done, uh, other things that happens in various different ones that you monitor. You can monitor multiple different projects if you wish, so on. And then you also have things for uh, configuring machine end-to-end -end setup. So if you just did a new, fresh install, you can say, okay, install all of my development tools here, clone this repository, and go. By the way, you could do the repositories on their own and install applications on your own. And then what you'll notice here is you can also add a dev drive here. And so that is very cool. Uh, dev drives here are a, a new thing. Basically, um, they uh, use this resilient file system or REFS. And if you've ever had Windows Defender uh, kind of get in the way. So, you know, if you're working with code, you're building tens of thousands of small files. Windows Defender likes to open each one and make sure it's not a virus. And this can make your compile time go from being like two minutes to 20. I almost always have to turn Windows Defender off when I'm working on C++ code. Uh, and this looks like it's going to go about solving that. We'll get to some of the details of that in just a minute. So as I mentioned earlier on, DevHome is an open source project. It is under the MIT license, so MIT licensed code, which is very permissive in what it will let you do. It is a youngish project. It's only been around for a couple of weeks. They just just announced it. So I guess it's been public. They initialized this three months ago. But uh, it's very active development. Uh, and again, a young project will be interesting to see where it ultimately ends up going. You can download releases off of uh, GitHub if you wish. There's also the recommended way is to grab it from the Microsoft Store, which literally nobody uses. But this does give you automatic updates. I did install it this way uh, just because it was the recommended way. So hey, why not? Uh, you click this, it'll open up the Microsoft Store automatically and download it for you there. There's no real pain points involved in it. And then the other key part of this, and technically DevDrive is a different product project. It's one of those things that is coming soon to Windows itself. Uh, it's built on this REFS, this new file system, uh, to employ targeted file system optimizations and provide more control over storage volume settings and security, including trust designation, antivirus configuration, and administrative control over what filters are attached. Um, you can see the process of actually going ahead and building it. Uh, details right there. But the key thing you're going to want to know about DevDrive is that it is Windows 11 Insider program build only, which is why I am not demoing it today because, well, I'm not I'm not installing a, a Insider build of Windows 11. Sorry, guys. If you want to check this one out, you do need to get on that. Uh, there's a couple other things you want to be aware of here when you create your DevDrive. It is going to be a minimum of 50 gigabytes in size. Now, the nice thing here is you can actually go down here to the creation process. So it's a minimum of 50 gigabytes, but you can create these as dynamic dynamically expanding. So it only grows as you make more space or use more space on it. You also have two file system options, VHD, which supports up to two terabytes, or VHDX, which supports virtual disks up to uh, two gigabyte or two terabytes in size, supporting a maximum of 64 terabytes, uh, and it is resilient to power failure events. So this is ultimately a new file system that is catered towards developers. If you're wondering what you should use this for, the entire idea behind it is, you can see, scroll on down here, uh, source code repositories and project files, uh, package caching and build output and intermediate files. You do not put your programs on there. So Visual Studio or MS Build or the .NET SDKs or various different other software that you use as part of your build chain are not installed on a dev drive. Dev drive is meant for your resources, code, caching, uh, output, intermediate and files, and so on. And you can see instructions on how to actually move cache to a dev drive, work with the dev drive, and so on, if you're interested in learning more. Uh, and then, of course, the key thing here is the performance mode. Uh, I don't know the specifics of exactly how this works. There's some details of it right here. Uh, but what it does basically is makes real-time protection that, that you basically have to turn off if you're doing any compilation and you don't want to go insane. Well, now it will work. you got these two different options for performance mode where it's enabled. Uh, so scan type changes. Uh, and basically what they're saying is it will be 30% faster if you use this new performance mode. So I'm probably most excited about this, but that is going to come regardless to the rest of this. Dev Home is its own project. It's just, it's going to give you the capability uh, to manage your dev drives there. But the actual dev drive thing is a separate project and a very cool project at that. So ladies and gentlemen, that there is the new Microsoft Dev Home, kind of a control center or portal on your machine for managing development. Again, it comes down to you can use it to quick install things. So you can have it install Visual Studio Unity, uh, a clone of repository, and so on for you, a, a, and then a 
portal or um, you know, a widget-driven portal for all of your development tasks. And I ultimately think it comes down to how much extension support there is, but I could think of this turning into a really cool project, especially because, once again, this is the team behind Windows Terminal, Subsystem for Linux, Power Toys, and the Winget Package Manager, and all four of those projects are actually really quite cool. So it'll be cool to see if this becomes a cool fifth open-source project for developers. Let me know what you think of a dev home, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.